Hello guys and welcome back. In the previous video, I was talking about the GUI of the Gazebo Simulator and today I'm going to continue about the same topic, but more specifically, I will talk about the model editor. So I advise you to watch this video to the end. And as usual, do not forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification button to stay updated. So let's start. Okay, so I have a prepared some notes here. All right, here we go. Now let me open the gazebo simulator from the terminal. I will start it as pause. Okay, so the way to open the model editor is by pressing on edit model editor or by just clicking Ctrl M. Now, of course, you have the ability here to add some simple shapes, some primitive shapes, but this will not be the case when you are dealing, when you will be dealing with complicated uh, models. So luckily you will have, you have the ability actually to add custom shapes. And these will be parts, uh, let's say designed uh, in other uh, modeling software, uh, like SolidWorks, CATIA, whatever, based on your preferences. And actually, Gazebo supports the, these three types of files, the Collada, the STL, and the OBG. And uh, the first two are preferable. So let me show you the real game. Now, what will be going on if you are a roboticist and if you want to create a complicated uh, robotic model. So here we go. Actually, I have used SolidWorks back in my college days and I have learned it in college and I uh, use it extensively. I have a big experience in robot in uh, SolidWorks. Um, uh, so you can use it if you want. Uh, and this will be available on Windows only, not on Ubuntu. And I have designed the parts of my model, which will be a car in this case. And I will use this model to explain about the model editor. And uh, I have exported these uh, parts uh, as STL format parts, uh, because this will be supported by Gazebo. Uh, and technically you can uh, import these parts into Gazebo, but this will not work apparently because of a certain issue. So in order to find a work around this problem, uh, I have uh, downloaded the Blender uh, software. Uh, actually, I use a Blender too, but I have a bigger experience in SolidWorks. So if you have a, an experience in a Blender, feel free to use it and to avoid all of this mess, okay? So a Blender actually will accept the STL format parts and will give you the ability to export your parts as STL format also, or even as Collada files. And uh, both uh, type of files actually will work in Gazebo. So this is great. Now, this will be the case. After making this clear, uh, let me... Uh, actually, I have included a link in the description down below. You can click on it to download a zip file and extract it to obtain this folder. And inside this folder, you can find uh, two parts uh, for my car model. You will find the chassis and you will find the wheel. And actually you will find two types of uh, files, the SOLIDWORKS part. If you want to, let's say, play, ar play around with the part uh, in SOLIDWORKS yourself and the STL format uh, files. And I have created two versions for the parts, the basic and the complex. And depending on your computational power, uh, feel free to uh, work with uh, either one of those. I will work with the basic uh, version. So uh, these parts actually will be used. So uh, Blender, uh, Blender is a modeling uh, software, as I stated earlier. Now, if you want to download it, you can open a browser page and go to blender.org. 
and here you can go to the download section and automatically the system uh, will detect uh, the type of uh, your operating system and uh, you can click on this button in here and download a zip file I have already done that obviously so I saved it in here this is the zip file you can extract it and if, we, if you open it you will find an executable if you click on it blender will be launched and of course you can use this file to create a shortcut anywhere you want you can copy it and put it anywhere you want put an icon to it etc now let me open a blender where i will include all my stl parts one by one apply some modifications to them before exporting uh, them as collada or stl files so let me import stl the stl parts let me go to desktop and youtube my car i will go with the basic and here we go and don't get deluded actually the car was included but there's a problem with the scaling i will fix it in a moment now here's the thing i will apply three modifications to each part first related to the scaling second to the orientation and finally to the origin of the part because i need to place the origin at a strategic position so i will not explain everything about the blender in this tutorial uh, because it's a very big software and this is out of the scope of uh, these videos uh, so i will just explain about what you need for this tutorial so i need you to press n and this will open a panel right here you can use the arrow to open it whatever uh, anyway if you uh, look right here you can find that the dimensions of my part are 2000 1700 and 4500 meters but i know from my solidworks design that the real dimensions are 2 1.7 and 4.5 so apparently there's a mistake in the scale by 1000 so i need to divide by 1000 along the x-axis along the y-axis and along the z-axis and here we go this is my card it appeared now let me change another thing apparently this is the x-axis the red one so i need a rotation about the x-axis by 90 degrees and here we go after fix, uh, fixing uh, these things i need to place the origin in a uh, strategic place now uh, i i want to clarify two ideas before doing that First, you will have this cursor, the circle right here, and you will have the orange dot, okay? Which is placed right now at the origin of the grid, which is the intersection of the axis of the environment. But of course, the origin of the grid and the orange dot are two separate uh, things, okay? So here's the thing. First, uh, I need you to understand that the cursor will play the, the role of the leader. I will place it uh, wherever I want and the uh, orange dot will be the follower it will follow it okay the second thing is that everything in this environment is measured with respect to the uh, center of the grid and not the orange dot okay now in order to do that uh, you need to go to uh, the uh, edit mode in here and this will allow you actually to see all the vertices and the edges inside your model uh, and make sure to turn on the snap and to select the vertex and the closest okay now uh, just a side note about the navigation inside the blender environment i advise you to uh, use the wheel of your mouse to zoom in zoom out and you can press on the wheel and move your mouse in order to rotate your camera of course there's a bit of lag okay here we go all right and in order to pan the uh, environment you can uh, hold the control button and use your num tabs uh, which are the numbers on the right hand side of your keyboard if you are using a us keyboard uh, i can use eight 
4, 6, and 2 to pan the screen. There are arrows on these numbers. Okay, now let me continue. Okay, so uh, the first thing that I need to do is that I want to uh, press the cursor in here in order to move it around. And with the snap uh, turned on, it will automatically snap to the vertices just like right here. I will choose any vertex as long uh, as it is a strategic. You can choose it uh, in here, in here, in here. It doesn't matter. Now what I will do is uh, that I will go to the object mode. I will make sure that this object is highlighted. I will right click on it and I will set the origin to the 3D cursor. And actually this will transfer the orange point to the cursor in here. Now I need to open this uh, panel in here again and uh, by pressing N and I need to change the location uh, and this time the location actually will be the location of the orange dot along with the uh, part that is connected to it. So I need to change it to 0, 0, 0 and here we go. Now I will be placing my origin in the strategic position uh, following like two stages let's say I have done the first stage. Now the second thing is I will go to the cursor in here and this time uh, I will use some numerical values in order to move the cursor because I need to be specific. In order to do that, let me open the uh, panel right here and go to the view tab this time. And here I can specify the location of the 3D cursor. Based on my measurements from the SolidWorks design, uh, I know that uh, along the X axis, I need to place it uh, in one meter. Along the Y axis, I need to be placed in the middle of the vehicle and I know its length was 4.5 meters so this will be minus 2.25 in the negative direction and I will place it at the bottom of the vehicle this will be my strategic position let me press N again and uh, I, 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 you need to make sure you are in the object mode select the object and set origin to the 3D cursor again and one final step, you need to make sure that the item location is at 0, 0, 0 in order to uh, place this desired position, which is the orange dot position at the center of the grid, which is the intersection of the axis. Now I am done. I did all of this because once I use this file in gazebo, I, I include this part in gazebo, it will be included like this and the origin will be placed in here in my desired position. So since I am done, I need to export this as either Collado or STL, as I told you earlier. Let me call it, let me save it here on my desktop actually. So let me call it the car chassis. Apparently I have another part in my home. I will not use it. And export as Collada. Okay. So uh, let me delete this for now. And the exact same thing will be repeated for the other part, which is the wheel. So let me import the wheel as an STL file. I will choose again the basic one, import STL. Let me change the scale. All right. And here we go. No need to change the orientation. Now here there's uh, some a certain shortcut that you can follow in order to place the origin at the center of the object since it's symmetric uh, in this case. So you can uh, click on the object, make sure you're in the object mode, right click on the object and set origin actually to uh, 
uh, geometry okay so set the origin to geometry and it, it will be automatically placed at the geometric center of this wheel now one final thing do not forget to place your item at the center of the grid because this is the real center after all and here we go now everything is done let me export it as a collada file and let me place it on my desktop actually and let me call it my car wheel okay so now we have uh, both uh, files I don't need to save feel free to save these parts uh, as uh, blender uh, files if you want to apply some modifications later on on these projects in a blender itself I don't need to save them now I have these two parts right now and these can be included directly in my gazebo simulator right now okay so let me open gazebo again all right let me go to the model editor and now I can add the custom shapes by browsing into my desktop and clicking on the uh, car chassis let's say and even if you uh, name your link the name will be the by default it will be called uh, link 0 link 1 link 2 and so on based on the order of the insertion and yeah uh, the parts are called links inside gazebo and apparently this is because of a certain bug you cannot name your links but in later versions of gazebo i'm using gazebo 9 maybe this problem uh, was solved or something so if i import this part as you can see the center is where i have placed it okay oh god there's there's a bit of lag in here all right so if you want to edit this uh, model right here you can right click on it and open the link inspector here actually you will have a three tabs you will have the link tab you will have the visual and the collision uh, and i will go over the visual and the collision uh, uh, things uh, later on when we deal with the coding uh, version of the model uh, so for now do, do not worry about them but the visual is just about the visual aspects of the uh, uh, of the model as the name implies and the collision is related to the physical aspects uh, that can be touched or something during the simulation so this is uh, related to the simulation and this is for the visual purposes now of course you can uh, but for now you will work with the link tab only of course you can specify a lot of things uh, if you want to apply the gravity uh, the self collision with the internal parts of the model in here the density you can specify the mass and uh, just be careful this is the inertial pause and uh, this will specify the, the rotational and linear position of the center of inertia and the axis of inertia and here you can specify the inertial values and this is the pause actually of your part you can specify it to be zero and zero if you want to place it at the center and zero But please make sure to not hit the enter button because if you do so, apparently because of a certain, uh, uh, if you do so, this will trigger the reset button right here. And because of a certain bug, this actually will remove uh, the link to your uh, uh, part uh, inside the visual and the collision tab. And as a result, this will give you an error. Here it is. This is the link to your part. Apparently, if you press reset, it will be gone and this will give you an error. So don't do that. After specifying a certain value, don't hit enter 
just like uh, use your mouse instead okay so you can enable the wind and stuff like that and you can press ok I will keep the values the same uh, but if you want a more realistic simulation uh, on the physical side of things you can feel free to use your imagination and play around with them okay so uh, I will place also my wheels actually so let me browse to my wheels and here I have the car wheel and let me open this and let me import it and the same thing can be applied here by right clicking on them and open the link uh, editor now if you go to the model tab in here you will see that you have the link 0 which is the chassis since it was placed at the beginning and here you will have link 1 and uh, just like a side note uh, everything every single part in your environment uh, will be placed in such a way that the measurements of its position actually uh, are the uh, measurements of the position of the center of this part with respect to the center of the grid okay I just wanted to make this clear now I will stop here for now in the next video I will continue by assembling this vehicle inside the gazebo environment and I will show you how to add a plug-in and to move uh, the vehicle around. Uh, so uh, I hope you guys like this video for now and I hope to see you later on.